Today's lecture is on purchasing and supply chain analysis tools and techniques. In this lecture, we will look at a variety of uh, tools and techniques that we've borrowed from the larger field of operations and supply chain management. The first one we're looking at is project management. In project management, we have a series of tasks. We move from one to the next to the next. We have to finish one before we start the ne next uh, task and so on. Some tasks can be done concurrently. Now we know with a project that we have a specific start date and a stop date and we need to finish within that uh, time frame. In fact lots of times projects are measured by date and time and we consume resources uh, such as time. You know we know that, that we have to have it done. Uh, I mean I've heard of say uh, with software that nine months is a, a, a usual time to do that. It, it depends on what the market requires of you and what you, your organization is requiring. And you should always know that you're operating with limited resource, you, resources. You'll never have all the time or the money or the people that you want. Now, project management works well with new products. Let's say you're installing a new information system you're doing value analysis. It could be with a new strategy for purchasing. It could be with developing a supplier. These are just examples of them. Here we have an example, uh, and we're using the network version, not the Gantt chart, but the network version, where we have activities that run uh, from A, notice up here, uh, from A all the way down to K. And we have uh, a listing of what's the preceding activity. Before you do B, for example, you have to do A. Before you do C, you have to do A. And this is, of course, maybe I should have started here, all of the activities. And this is a very um, old synthesized or condensed version of your total project, your major, major activities. And then each one of these can bro be broken down into sub-activities. Let's take this list of activities and let's see what it looks like in a network. Yes, remember previously we said that before you do C, before you do B, you have to do A. Anyway, this is just one example. Uh, what we would do with this is determine the uh, amount of time it takes to do each one, and we would figure out which is the critical path. In other words, if something goes wrong in one of the activities, uh, how long will it increase the time of, of uh, the project? There's, you could spend a whole course on just project management. We're doing this. We've got four or five examples. In fact, the, the, the next few uh, examples are uh, things that could be taught. You could have an entire course taught for each one of them. So let's move on. The next item is learning curves. We know that as we do something over and over, we get better at it. And so what it says here, or what we're looking at is find out what is that rate of improvement that happens when we do learn. And as I mentioned just a sec few seconds ago, is that the learning rate represents the improvement as production increases in volume, the more we do, and by practice. Now, an 85% learning rate, and you can have learning rates of 90%, 80%. We just happen to use one that's 85%. And of course, there are tables that explain, let's, let's say that you're learning how to use the, the learning curve. And it's usually a curvilinear, it's not linear, it's curve or logarithmic. And we use paper uh, uh, charts that, that uh, turn it into a straight line. Uh, and what it, this is explaining is that an 85% learning rate indicates that direct labor declines by 15% each time production increases. Now, not all processes benefit from the learning uh, curve. But usually, these are just some examples. When a supplier uses a new process for the first time, the learning curve kicks in. 
When a supplier makes a technically complex item for the first time, they get better at it. Learning curve, again. When an item has high direct labor contact, content, again, the learning curve. Our next topic in our uh, chapter or in our lecture is value analysis and value engineering. Uh, same thing, you know, V-A-V-E. Basically, is that we're taking a look at how do we determine value. Value is function divided by cost. Maybe the little diagram, I realize that the words aren't the same, but we have here, again, the notion of benefit or function over cost. And that is uh, how we determine value. For example, if I'm comparing a uh, Mercedes-Benz versus a, a Ford Focus, I might say that the uh, Mercedes-Benz has more function to it. You know, there's more creature comforts, maybe the velocity is higher, you know, things like that. But there's also a cost of buying the Mercedes-Benz, whereas the function where the Ford Focus is much cheaper. And so you could actually come up with, with the Mercedes-Benz and the Ford Focus being equal if you take this formula saying that function is over cost. Anyway, I hope you get the idea. Now, some of the tests for determining value is, uh, can we reduce weight? You know, th these are some very simple questions. Is there a better way to make the item or product? Can uh, a lower cost standard part replace a customized part? Do you need a customized part? Are we using the right equipment and tooling? You know, let's say that if, if we're in a bakery and just making a few cakes, maybe general purpose of, uh, Equipment is okay, but let's say that we're making uh, hamburger buns by the millions. Well, in that case, we'd go from general purpose equipment to mass production tools. Uh, anyway, these are some of the uh, comments. I'm going to give you a little example. Those of you who are into military weapons, and that's not everybody, I understand that. Um, there was a plane uh, called the A-10, and it was uh, nicknamed the Warthog due to its appearance. It was made with off-the-shelf items. We're talking about the wheel assemblies, uh, some of the weapons that went into it, uh, just a lot of things. There was not all that extra uh, whiz-bang technology that went into it. It's a very solid airplane. It's not maybe the most elegant for flying. But notice, $13 million per plane versus over $110 million and maybe even more for an F-35. And then the question is, what does the F-35 deliver in value, or what's the benefit? And it may be that the A-10, which was made for as a tank killer and, and slow uh, flying, may have been a better plane, say, like for use in, in Iraq and Afghanistan. I'm not condoning those two wars. I'm just using this as an example. Our next item that we look at is quantity discount analysis. And this is very similar to the learning curve, is that the more we buy, the lower the cost. And usually what it means is that our supplier, as they buy better equipment and their employees become better at, at pr uh, production, the costs go down. And the question then is, does your company benefit from buying in quantity? You know, do you benefit you personally from going to Costco or to Sam's? That's another, you know, at the personal level, uh, we need to look at that because we're paying a membership cost to go in, but it just may be that we get a lower cost. Process mapping. This is coming from uh, the field of lean uh, management, and what we're trying to do is reduce waste. And what we want to do is take out non-value-added activities. And we first take a look at all of the tasks, activities, or steps in a process. And, and of course, we need to work with lots of other people in the organization. That's why we cross multiple functional boundaries. And, you know, sometimes these groups have conflicting goals. But uh, what we're doing is trying to identify what works and what doesn't work, and then eliminate the stuff that has no value added or that creates waste or creates a delay. Notice 
that we have, and I know the colors aren't all that clear, but we have non-value adding and value adding activities. And in this example, we're taking out step three and step six. Very simplified uh, example uh, within your your own organization where, or wherever you apply this process, you would have to make those determinations.